Dave Parker with the Coyote Story. Dave, welcome back to Clahalia. I had a, I had you on just about the same time last year, and where you told me about Chief Colhaney, whose trip yeah. to uh, to England to visit the King. That was the last story we heard, and now we're going to be listening to you, and you're going to be telling us about the Coyote Story. Uh, maybe you can tell me about some background about the Coyote Story. Yes. Uh, uh the coyote was a, a very common animal around the Indian villages because he's a scavenger and uh, he was very much in evidence. And so people learned his character and uh, there were times when he could be a fool and there were times when he could be a hero. And, uh, And there are so many different stories uh, about the coyote. I thought I'd tell some of the stories, you know, where that had some kind of a moral and uh, and start off as where he was a fool, somewhat. The coyote wandered along through the timber. He came upon a teepee from whence there was some smoke. So he knew the people who were home and he thought he'd pay a visit. And the custom of the people in those days, they just walked right in. They didn't knock or anything. They just entered the house and sat down. And, uh, and of course, the people usually, the, the people that, own home would usually welcome their guests and sometimes treat with food or a meal. Well, this first house that Coyote came to was the Bear's house. And of course, Mr. Bear decided he would treat Mr. Coyote with a with a meal. So Mr. Bear takes his knife and he cuts off Mrs. Bear's teeth, one of her breasts. She had great big fat breasts and uh, he cut one of them off and of course he reaches into the, to the, fire, the, the fireplace with his paw into the ashes and rubs ashes over the wound, and the wound is completely restored again. There's another breast there, but here they have a breast to eat, you see, and he cooks up and makes a very fine meal. And, and uh, of course, in due time, Coyote went home. And sometime later, Mr. Bear happened along and visited Coyote. And of course, Coyote, he thought he would return the favor in the same manner that the bear had treated him. So he gets out his knife and he's going to cut the breast off of his wife and she had flabby little skinny breasts and uh, nothing. And when he went to cut, she, she whined because it hurt and uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, he was trying to insist that he do this. But then when the bears saw him having trouble with that and that it wasn't just his thing, but to, to, I told him, well, that maybe you oughtn't to do that. Oh, he said, carried, he said, I do this all the time, you know, I mean, which was a lie, of course, you know, but, uh, but anyway, uh, Mr. Bear finally convinced him not to go any further with the cutting off his wife's tit and, uh, and and the bear took his knife and he cut off a piece of his rump and gave it to Coyote and of course he, the bear put his paw in the ashes and rubbed over the wound and it was healed and restored immediately. So, 
the, that was the end of that that little speed with Mr. Bear. And then the coyote going along another time through the woods and he, he came upon another teepee and of course he invites himself in. And this was the King Fisher's house. Well, when the King Fisher decided to treat coyote to a, to a meal, he puts his belt on and climbs up to the peak of the teepee and dives into the stream beside the teepee and comes up with a belt load of fish. And of course they had a nice fish feed. So Coyote goes home and, and later on King Fisher comes to visit. And of course Mr. Coyote, he had to imitate Mr. King Fisher well, he puts his belt on and he climbs up to the top of his teepee and dives into the creek. But he couldn't jump very far and uh, he got stuck in the mud and uh, it just made a, um, well, it was a fiasco. Well, and again, um, King Fisher, he puts the belt on and he gets up on the, the peak of the teepee and dives into the creek and comes up with the fish for Mr. Coyote. Well, the moral of that story was that uh, don't try to do things that are, that, peop that other people do. You know, I mean, just stick within your own thing, within your own abilities and that sort of thing. Well, that was, uh, I guess, kind of a, some stories about when Coyote was something of a fool. But there was a time when he was a hero As he drifted down along the Columbia River, he came to a village where the people were starving. And right across the river, there was deer jumping all over the place, all kinds of food over there, but uh, and here these people were starving. And he asked him, what's the matter with you people? All kinds of food jumping around over there. Well, they told him, well, there's a man-eater over there. And when we go over there, we encounter this man-eater, and he uh, does away with us there. We're afraid of him. And the man-eater has a big dog that he uses to kill the people that go over there. Our coyote said, I'll fix that. Now, Coyote had a very small dog. It had only one ear. You called him Sakutana. That means one ear, eh? And he stuck a knife up through Sakutana's one ear, so it stuck right up over his head, Sakutana's head. And of course, he goes across the river to encounter the, the man-eater. And when they met, they had their dogs on the leash, of course, and uh, and uh, the man-eater warned Coyote that uh, you better be awful careful because his dog would uh, eat Coyote's dog and, and him too. And Coyote said, well, you just be careful. My dog might just pick your dog. Anyway, they did let their dogs go. And when the man-eater's big dog opened his mouth, Sakratana just jumped right into his mouth and went, ran right straight through the big dog. And the, the knife on his ear just slit that dog wide open and of course it flattened out there. And of course, without the big dog, the, the man-eater was no contest at all. Coyote went and beat him into the ground. And of course, then uh, the people could go and get themselves some food. It looks like they're trying to tell us that we've got no more t air time, Dave. Thank you very much for coming on Klahalia. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching Klahalia. This is Rick Sagan saying so long for now.